Hey guys, today I'm starting a new series called The Build and it's gonna be basically me going over my guns that I build for my own needs, for my own gameplay videos. I tend to do almost a different gun every time I play so I have a lot of uh, material for this sort of thing and I almost always do something to the guns to make them work better for myself either by adding some accessories that fit my play or customizing them internally or externally, visually. So. Uh, stay tuned, this is going to be serious, and today we're going to start off with this JG AUG A3. I'll let you know what I like about it, what I don't like about it, how it handles, how it plays, how it shoots. And it's sort of a review, but a review after a gun's been tailored to a specific need. Stay tuned, start off with the AUG. Alright, so the first gun I have up here is the AUG A3. This started life as a JG A3 model. And the reason it's I've had it on my wall for a while is because for some reason these manufacturers like to make guns that shoot 420 or 450, which most fields don't allow such high FPS guns on their fields. So I'm not sure why manufacturers tailor their guns to the minority instead of the majority of the players. I've taken it to Airsoft Extreme and it's been tuned down to about 330. And I was using it with an 11-1 LiPo, which fits in here very well. As you can see, one of these brick LiPos fits in there nicely. Um, there is a lot of stuff going on in there. I think there's a MOSFET in there. But the brick is no issue. I remember I had a classic army AUG, and I would try to shove a small 9.6 in there, and it was just a nightmare because it's so cramped in there. It took a lot of work, and that's without even the MOSFET. It was just a single wire coming out there. So, plenty of battery room for a small LiPo and this gun runs really well with a LiPo. Great rate of fire, great trigger response. Now speaking of trigger, one thing I hate about this AUG is this two-stage trigger. You pull it back a little bit for semi-auto and you pull it all the way back for full auto. This is a great idea in theory and it might work in the real world but in Airsoft I use this on a semi-auto only field and First game I tried just you know doing the half pull for semi and full pull for auto, which I which meant I tried to stay out of full auto. Well, that's great when you're shooting in the backyard, you can control the trigger pull. But in a game when you see a target and you want to get on it quickly, you just jam that trigger and off you go with the full auto. I did foresee this happening, so what I did was drill through this trigger here, drilled an opening so right where it stops in semi-auto there's the opening and I could insert a small nut, nut in there that keeps it from going any further than the semi-auto stage so in, in essence I'm kind of hampering the gun and making it semi-auto only and this worked pretty well for the most part sometimes the, the little screw in there would turn uh, in an awkward way where it would not allow the semi to go fully back and then the trigger would kind of get stuck and that only happened a couple of times but that is one way you could remedy this uh, two-stage trigger is to pin it so it could never go past the semi-auto stage into the full auto stage if you need the gun to be semi-auto. I would kind of give it a little more slack than I did here because it was so tight that if at all the little screw in there turned the trigger could no longer travel fully back and it would actually get stuck in no auto mode which is really bad. So moving on from there, next thing I want to address these magazines. I don't remember what brand they are but I'm a fan of mid caps, so I got me some mid caps. And I guess in theory, what these are supposed to do is have a easy to clean door down here that you just twist. And you take the spring out, and you can probably run a cleaning cloth through there. But because they are made of some kind of crappy, brittle plastic, these will break right out when you put a lot of BBs in here and pressurize the spring. This little door just can't hold the pressure, and it pops out. I actually, cut myself yesterday when I was loading the mag and this popped out on me and the spring came out shooting everywhere scraped me across the fingers so what I've done to remedy that problem is I ran some electric tape around here front to back and then zip tied really tight on there so it can't move and that seems to have solved the problem also I wasn't topping the mags all the way off because I want to give them uh, some kind of chance to not explode on me so if you have these mid caps with the little gate down here make sure you do this because it's almost it's, it's almost a guarantee they're gonna break. I had three of them all of them busted, so it's pretty much a given. The high cap magazine that this gun came with is pretty crappy as well. It 
it does feed and feeds pretty well, but winding the wheel only gives you about maybe 20 shots per wind, which is pretty weak because uh, I was shooting a classic army mid cap or a high cap at the store when they picked this up and it was feeding for like 50-60 BBs on one wind. So uh, not the greatest high caps and these mid caps, whatever brand they are, I'm not sure. They're also crabby. Watch out for that door. So moving forward past the trigger here. The next thing that bugs the crap out of me on this gun is this uh, cross safety. So basically press it from the right to put on fire, press it from the left to put on semi on um, safe. This works well if you're right-handed shooting off the right hand shoulder because naturally your hand wants to go where the safety is. So when you grab the gun, you deactivate the safety. I think that was the concept behind this whole thing and it's a great idea. But let's say you're a left-handed first shooter, you will now be always putting your gun on on safe. You want to grab it up here and that will uh, engage the safety so you'll be running around with the gun off. So when you do grab it from the left hand grip you kind of have to go under the safety so you have to always keep that in mind when you're grabbing the gun. This, this is the same thing for me when transitioning shoulders. When I go on this side I have to be under the, the fire selector so I don't accidentally disengage it. So I always kept checking with my thumb to make sure uh, the safety is disengaged. Now of course this gun is a bullpup so everything's to the back and it, in real life it would eject spent brass out here. So in real life you've never really shoot it off this shoulder. I've seen people shooting the AUG and you have to shoot it in some weird way like this so the brass is not flying into your face. So I understand they didn't really expect you to be using it left handed in real life or that wasn't a big concern of theirs. That probably explains why it's so right hand dominant. But as far as airsoft, you know, we don't have to deal with the brass ejecting, so that's sort of an important feature for me personally. But you can't really fault the manufacturer for this. They're replicating a real gun and that's a thing on the real gun. But it is something to be aware of if you're left-handed or you like to transition shoulders as you shoot around different pieces of cover. Next, the rail. This is a stock metal rail here that came with the gun. What I've done is made these inserts for the gun out of plastic to give it a proper AUG A3 top. In my opinion, it makes the gun look two times better. Even though it's a small little addition, it really completes that look. You don't have that weird hanging rail over here that makes no sense. And it makes it realistic and authentic. And I have a whole video on this if you're interested in checking that out. And on top I have my EOTech 551 that I put on everything because I love this sight. It just makes it so much easier to aim and so much quicker to pick up your target. Highly recommend investing in a quality optic for an airsoft gun. There's lots of replicas and they all live up to their price point. There's a reason you pay a premium for these. Uh, before I go too far, obviously the gun's been painted and the paint's coming off a little bit from use. but my opinion that makes the gun look better. Uh, on this side the sling swivel really did a job on it especially when the sling was attached here really scratched the crap out of it but you know now it looks like some kind of battle camo. So I painted this tan, I left the front black sort of a two-tone thing going on here. Moving forward I have this Nightbull AFG on here and it works really well on the AUG because this rail gives you a nice place to rest your hand when you grab that AFG. Um, and I've modded the AFG to hold my OLED flashlight here that mounts to the rail and has a pressure switch. I ran it through the, the MacBook grip by drilling a hole here and splitting it in half if you take out these screws, these three set screws here and the main one that holds it to the rail. You can take the whole grip in two pieces. So drilling this hole, then running through here and then clamping it together holds the little pressure switch in place. Also I took out this little uh, finger nub that goes in here when you split it in half and actually ran my pressure switch inside the grip and then close the whole thing together over it. So it's sort of one unit. I might actually move this with the light whenever I move it to a different weapon. It becomes like one uh, unit now. And then I ran the zip tie just to hold the pressure switch a little tighter to the, uh, the AFG. And it works really well because all you have to do is just pressurize it just a little bit. And sort of when you go to shoot, that is a natural reflex is to grab it. Uh, moving on to the flashlight, it's an O-Light 
brand flashlight. It's fairly inexpensive. It's I think in around seventy dollar range. Uh, it comes with the the light, the mount, and the pressure switch. And it's really good quality. It has three settings, and you can choose which setting goes to initially. I have it on um, this low setting, which is I think two hundred lumens. Then double tap in it puts it at 500 lumens and then triple tap in it puts it in strobe mode. And you can choose which setting comes on first with this little white button on here. I had it set to 500 initially and it was just washing out all my cover. I turned it on and I couldn't see anything because it would just light up the wall in front of me. So I would recommend the lower setting if you're just using it to kind of trace BBs and to spot enemies. But you could always double tap it to get into that higher setting if you're actually trying to look into a dark area. And then moving forward, I have my custom 3D printed camera mount up here. This one I did in the style of an odd flash hider, so keeping it a little bit more authentic. But this holds my Mobius zoom camera, it slides right in. And that lines it up perfectly with the barrel, so when I shoot, I get those nice, um, easy to trace shots to the target. And it just makes for a more interesting gameplay and for confirmation of hits. So that's the gun. Um, I did enjoy using it. It's um, fairly accurate. It has a really long inner barrel because of its layout. The regular fire was great. Too bad I didn't get to shoot it full auto, but hopefully in the future. Uh, the handling is a little awkward. It is very heavy and mostly because of the, this front end metal piece. It's all one solid piece. But it is balanced because the gearbox is back here and you're gripping it somewhere near the middle. So it's fairly balanced. Uh, but it is awkward, especially going shoulder to shoulder with this fire selector that you almost inevitably you're gonna turn off. It's just not as uh, agile as like an M4. I mean, there's a reason why the M4 is so popular. But it's a good gun. It's a little bit more work than your typical gun to use. But again, Airsoft is all about recreating the real world and trying out new stuff, stuff you'd never get to shoot in real life. And you get to shoot an AUG in airsoft and run it the way you would. It's a fun gun, it's a pretty good performer, and I'm looking forward to using it again somewhere maybe where I could use it on full auto because I think it'll really shine at that point. So that's the AUG for you. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this first episode of the build. Uh, hopefully I'll see you on future episodes. Let me know what you think of this idea. I got many guns coming down the line. Uh, please stay tuned, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.